What's going on, guys? It's Cortez, and I've been playing a little bit of Battlefield lately. Uh, it's kind of re-sparked my interest in the game, uh, that being E3. And here to talk with me with it is a very special guest. Go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Girl Hands. It's been a little while since I've done a commentary, uh, but I'm looking forward to talking about a little Battlefield 3. So. Uh, yeah, so we got uh, some Rush gameplay that I got this morning, and... Um, we gonna start off with the assault kit, my favorite gun of the game, the M416, and I think they're trapped in this main, this first bomb site little room here. Yeah, like this point right here is like a really bad choke point on this map. You, it, it can be really difficult if the enemy teams like hunker down in there to break loose and plant the bomb, uh, but it seems like you guys did a pretty good job of planting it in there, and you almost defib that guy. Almost. It's really, yeah, it's really hard to get a deep fit, but when you do, it's pretty pretty awesome, but uh, you're really close. Yeah, this this choke point is definitely one of the harder ones in the game. I've had games on defense time and time again where we've shut them out, not let them get a single plant because that bomb site is so defended by the walls, and you can't. it's not even like you can blow up the walls to get in. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't allow you to do that. That's one of the things that kind of, uh, kind of stinks uh, about this game. Is it doesn't seem to have... If you've been playing the series for a while, like with Battlefield Bad Company 2, you can destroy almost everything. Uh, there's only like one or two buildings, like building types you couldn't really destroy. You can destroy almost any wall. In this game though, I guess because it's a new engine, and they're still building upon it, uh, I guess you can't destroy everything as much as you could in Bad Company 2. Um, and that's kind of one of the things, you, you mentioned E3 before, but that's one of the things they kind of hinted at in Battlefield 4, like the revolution, how much destruction you can do in the level. I mean, I said to be seen what's capable, but it seems like there's a lot of yeah. potential. I mean, all we've seen is the skyscraper blowing up, and then there was like a street, I think, that, what, collapsed or whatever? Yeah, that was actually really, I mean, it's 100% staged. They made it out like it was all live, but I mean, it was 100% staged, but when the, the tank was going on the street, and they go down to the subway, and they blow up that pillar, and the tank falls through, uh, I mean, that, that's pretty badass, and it seems like there's a lot of potential. You can set up a bunch of different traps, like you could have maybe like a sniper, spotting for you so you know where the tank is and then you can blow it up and take out the tank if you're in the subway. Uh, so it definitely seems like it's something feasible you could do uh, and it seems like it, the destruction can really have a huge impact on the gameplay. And that was a nice kill right there. We yeah. jumped around it and avoided him. Yeah, I basically just ran out to the street, tried to get as many as I could. Wiggy, here's a tip for you. I know it's going to sound like a broken record at this point, but if you want to do better at Battlefield, bunny hop. Just by all means, bunny hop. That works. <laughs> it's really it's well. gonna save your life. It's really cheesy and it, it looks stupid when you're doing it, but um, yeah, that's the uh, it's probably one of the only ways to survive when you're caught off guard like that. Yeah, I mean the hit detection in this game is so much more precise, so you're not really getting hit boxes to to work in your favor. So if you can make it harder to hit you in any way possible, you should really do it. Yeah, yeah. And the um, and I think later on in this video, because I like to snipe a lot too, and I think later on you start to quick scope. I've never done this before. I, I've seen people do it, but you really make it look like it's a very viable strategy, but you start sniping with the L96 uh, without any scope. I've always used a scope in my rifle, but you're getting a ton of one-hit kills, and you're taking out a lot of people. And I, I need to start doing that now, actually, because it looks like fun, and it actually looks like it makes it easier to do kind of more close-quarters combat. It, it, it's kind of easier in a sense that, yeah, you can defend yourself at closer range, and you can get the, on tighter maps, things like Metro, if you're on the tracks, you can shoot down the lane of the tracks, and you, mm -hmm. you can hit people that aren't that far away, and you keep all your peripheral vision. But it's almost harder in the sense that if you're moving at all, the bullet will more often than not miss. So you kind of need to keep yourself stationary. Yeah. And I use it more for just marking targets, trying to flush people out, get them suppressed. And because with a sniper, it's really easy to suppress people. But, you know, I take the one hits and the kills as they come. And I, I, I guess I, I owe my, my skill at this to World at War, being able to use the unscoped bolt actions in World at War. When I was watching you do that, that's exactly what I thought of. It was like the World at War style sniping. It's, the, it's actually the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, I mean, it was a great mechanic in that game. They tried to bring it back in Black Ops 2. It hasn't really worked out. They just brought it back for what I think is the worst sniper rifle in the game, Ballista, so... Um, that's not my cup of tea in that game, but in World of War, I mean, it was it was a hell of a lot of fun to do, and it actually <laughs> took skill. And here, it takes even more skill just because it's Battlefield. The sniping in this game is very gratifying. It's, it's much. I, I personally think it's much more difficult. Uh, than most other shooters, especially something like Call of Duty. I agree. Because there's a lot of factors you have to take into consideration. There's like, 
gun sway. It, there's, you know, the amount of time it takes for you to fire your bullet and actually hit the target. There's bullet drop. And shots to the body don't guarantee a one-hit kill like they do in Call of Duty. Nine times out of ten, if you want to get a one-hit kill, it has to be a headshot. That's what uh, so. threw me off of the bad... Co- when I had the Bad Company 2 beta, I had never played Battlefield before, mm-hmm. and I was trying to use the M21 sniper or whatever, and it was a bolt action. And... To, to learn how to all the new mechanics of bullet drop and you know the one hit body hits aren't mm-hmm. gonna do it for you. It put me off of the game itself immediately. Oh yeah. And I ended up not getting Battlefield Two, but then I played the Battlefield Three beta and it was a complete one eighty. And I was like, mm-hmm. this game is amazing. So yeah. I'm actually really happy that Battlefield Four is gonna have an open beta. Uh, we'll put links in the description to see how you can get into the beta. If yeah, there's qualify. four different ways. I, I know one of them is if you're a premium member, and I think the other one is if you. Got Medal, Medal of Honor, Honor or something. Yeah. And there's two yeah. other ways, so there's a yeah. lot of different ways to get into the beta. I think, did you get Medal of Honor? No, I'm a premium member, though, so I do have access okay, to so you, it. Okay, you still have access to the beta, mm-hmm. okay. And that would mean probably, I think, you know, the rest of the crew, Wiggy and everybody else, I think they're all premium members, so they'll have access as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it just depends, you know, when they get that beta out, but it's always great because the beta always leads to a, a more polished final oh, yeah. product on release day. You know, still, obviously, they can tweak some things later on down the road, um, but it's definitely going to lead to a nicer product. On yeah, you'll, you'll never hear me complaining about a company that does beta. Uh, I've always loved saying that, because one, I mean, obviously, it gives you early access to the game, but also, it allows you to, to polish and tweak the game and balance the game. A lot of times, people just throw it out there and really don't do a whole lot afterwards, but I, I think beta yeah. really help with that. I've never heard of a beta that hurt a game. Uh, World at War, Gears 3, and Battlefield 3 are probably my favorite three betas I've ever played. So. And maybe, maybe the only way it would hurt it is if people are just... Compl- like you mentioned, you did the demo for Bad Company 2, and you are completely put off by it. So, yeah. I mean, some people might lose interest, but I think the quality of the game... I don't think there's ever been an instance where the quality of the game suffered. That has been. Yeah. So, are you, I mean, before we get too off topic, I mean, the beginning of the the um, conversation, you mentioned something about E3. I wanted to hear your thoughts on, on Battlefield 4 and all the things that showcase with that. Battlefield 4 was looking like a real front runner to represent the next generation of consoles and the next level of gameplay that consoles can handle. We've had it so long, you know, we've had PC Master Race being thrown out since for the last 10 years now, and, you know, this is finally a level where the consoles could finally compete on the same plane with 32 on 32, 60 frames per second, no frame rate lag, you know, less load times, you know, less lag in general between players. Uh, Battlefield already has dedicated servers, and they're just going to expand on that idea for the consoles for the rest of the titles that they launch. Um, I know another one that looked pretty good was Titanfall. Yeah, yeah, no, th- that game looks interesting as well. I, I didn't think I'd be interested in it in fir- at first, but then I started seeing the gameplay, people, like, jumping in out of the Titans. Uh, that looks Back, like fun. I didn't uh, but, either, but, but it looked it looked better as it went on. Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, going back to what you are talking about with Battlefield, I- I'm actually really happy that they're bringing 32, 32, or 32 versus 32 onto consoles, and it's 60 frames per second. <laughs> if I can speak, yeah. it's 60 frames per second. Because uh, a lot of times when the game hit console... I would always hear complaints about, you know, the, the pacing is really bad, uh, that it feels really clunky. That's not a problem on PC. PC can run well above 30 frames per second. It can run, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I have it running at like 80 frames per second on high on my PC. And with 32 um, on 32, and you feel right at home. Yeah, and there's there's just constant action. But the console side of things hasn't really had a chance to experience that. Uh, so I'm really glad that they're bringing that in. I'm really glad that people are going to have an opp- opportunity to do that. And it seems... Uh, like, a lot of people are excited. I've seen a lot more buzz for Battlefield 4 than I have any other Battlefield game on console. I like in Twitter and on different forums. People are actually seeing like that's a game that's going to draw them in. And I, I hope they do a good job with it. Because when you actually play Battlefield the way it's meant to be played, it is a ton of fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of potential on console. It can definitely be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's meant to be played with 64 people and with... Um, with, with higher frames per second than 30. Yeah, and so far the PCs have been the only system that's been able to handle it. Yeah, but now that exactly. the consoles are getting rehashed, completely yeah. new generation, full of new capabilities, we don't even know what they're completely capable yet. We've only heard specs. Yeah, but exactly. So it, there's, there's a lot of potential. I'm really glad that they're doing that for console. Uh, and they're also adding in new features, too. Like the uh, We mentioned before, like the level damage. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I don't know where I am with that, because every time they showed the level damage in the game, the, the biggest emphasis was the skyscraper. 
and mm-hmm. it looked cool. Like, it fell apart, and there's ashes all over the place, but at the same time, that was the only big thing that was destroyed. There's other buildings that were left completely untouched, and I'm yeah. hoping... I'm, you know, you, we were talking before, you, you made it out like it was pre can Not necessarily pre can but it was just the same thing. The same thing's going to get destroyed every single match. But yeah. I mean, are the other buildings are going to get destroyed? Like, what's going to happen with that? That's what I'm hoping doesn't happen. Is, you know, just there's certain buildings that are pre-programmed to be mm-hmm. self-destructible. Or not self-destructible, yeah. Um, hopefully it's not, you know, one novelty building per map that exactly. gets destroyed. You know, it. hopefully it's on the level of Bad Company 2's destruction where anything and everything can be destroyed. Mm-hmm. And you can get, you know, holes in the street. You know, not only like in Battlefield 3 when you can blow holes in the walls, but it takes a lot of significant effort to knock a building down. Yeah. But hopefully, you know, Battlefield 4 will increase the destruction. And with the Frostbite 3.0 engine being out and basically being field tested for the first time since the beta, uh, hopefully they, they tweak whatever needs to be tweaked and then it comes out looking as great as it could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what else are they? Oh, there's the spectator mode, which they actually had that in Battlefield 2. I think they removed it because people were upset that only one person could be a commander on each team. Um, they had something kind of similar to it in Bad Company 1 where you could work the artillery. Uh, but that is actually a really, really cool aspect. I'm glad they're bringing it back. And apparently they're not going to be in the game like they were in Battlefield 2. Um, you, you can, I guess, control it from like a tablet or a PC. Uh, but being able to call in artillery, call in UAVs, issue commands to different squads... It's a lot of fun. It kind of adds like a real-time strategy aspect to it. And the fact that it doesn't reduce the player count, that it's like, you know, you have two extra people that can join into the game, I think it's going to make for uh, some fun matches as well. And not only that, if you're running a team uh, of friends or if it's like a competitive thing, if Battlefield, you know, ends up having a, ver- a, a larger competitive scene than they've had in the past, uh, having the commander mode could be really helpful to that effect because then you can get the COD casting effect in. You can have one person who will shoutcast the matches that will sit in that spectator mode, and they can see everything that's going on between both teams. And it would make for you know much more interesting gameplay because there's going to be a lot more coordination. And then even in pubs, I think you said the uh, the commander can issue commands, and everyone who follows them will get more XP. Yeah, like whatever points you get in match, like you know, you get 100 points for a kill. If the commander says grab C and you go grab it, you get like, I don't know how much it was, but like maybe 100, 200 points. So it'll help you level faster and you know, you'll get more points in the game. Uh, so there's an incentive to do stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that. I like the fact that you have somebody directing the field. And you mentioned before something about spectator mode. I, I think that was spawned or that was created because people wanted to see more emphasis on competitive play. Uh, so they're bringing that in. I think that also could be really interesting because Battlefield has a lot of what the fuck moments in it. Yeah. Um, and being able to kind of record that and getting different perspectives, I think, could be pretty interesting. Yeah. Plus, with the you know the the whole YouTube and theater mode across mm-hmm. different games now, it's expanding. So Call of Duty might not be the only channel uh, video game that channels base themselves around. Now with you know, there's already channels out there that base themselves around Battlefield. But you can see growth over the next, you know, year or so with the new theater mode or sport spectating mode. Yeah, I'm excited. I think I think for the console space, I think this is a big, uh, big change, and I think a lot of people are gonna. I hope that a lot of people are really gonna enjoy this game if they do it right. So I'm looking forward to it, and I'm glad I could come on and talk about it. It's a pretty entertaining gameplay, by the way. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, it's great to have you. Looking forward to the beta. Looking forward to everything else. For for Corella, this is Cortez. Stay frosty, you guys.